Units of the infamous 155th Marine Brigade of the Russian Armed Forces found themselves surrounded by the Ukrainian Armed Forces during an offensive in the Kursk region. This was reported by the Russian Z Resource Northern Channel, which has connections with the Russian Army. The 155th Brigade of the Russian Armed Forces has encountered problems in the Novoy Vanovka area, which is on the northwestern flank of the Kursk direction. Russian soldiers have no access to ammunition and food. They found themselves effectively surrounded by Ukrainian forces, writes Z Channel. He specified that despite the critical situation, commanders send false reports to Moscow about the brigade's non-existent successes. The problems are hushed up. There are many difficulties and even greater challenges lie ahead of us, Severny Kanal reported. It should be noted that the 155th Separate Guards Marine Brigade of the Russian Pacific Fleet appears in numerous reports of war crimes committed in Ukraine as well as in the Kursk region. The unit participated in the bloody offensive on Mariupol and then distinguished itself by murdering and torturing civilians and prisoners of war as well as looting. It should be noted that Russian z -war correspondents accused the Kremlin media of exaggerating the achievements of the Russian army in the Kursk region. The second attempt by Russian troops to advance in the Kursk region fizzled out within a day. The Russian Armed Forces Group made only one successful breakthrough in the Obukovka area, after which it ran out of steam. Several well-known z -war correspondents spoke frankly about this. Propagandist Yuri Podolyaka accused the Kremlin media of lying, which paints some incredible successes for the Russian army near Kursk. According to him, the second attempt at an offensive on this section of the front failed just like the first. I don't know why our media started talking nonsense yesterday about the enemy planning to leave Kursk Oblast. So far, everything is very similar to how our operation developed in September. A breakthrough on the first day. On the second day, the enemy's panic passes and they begin to counter-attack. As a result, the front as a whole freezes, wrote the z -war correspondent. He specified that the Russian armed forces have not had any successes in the Sudza area, where the Ukrainian armed forces have become very stubborn. Another popular Z channel, Philologist in Ambush, painted a similar picture. It claims that the Ukrainian armed forces in Kursk Oblast quickly came to their senses and stopped the Russian offensive on the northwestern flank. Ours advanced very well, but then they stalled. There was no significant advancement in the area of the base of the breakthrough from the east. Attacks from the north are getting stuck. There is movement on the northeastern flank, but it is quite difficult, wrote the Russian z -war correspondent. He emphasized that there is no operational encirclement of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region, as the Russian media talks about. Moreover, there are no grounds for a cauldron there. Heavy fighting is underway, in which the Russian army is suffering heavy losses. In general, everything is complicated again, complained philologist in ambush. An American volunteer veteran who fought in the wars in Iraq, Afghanistan and Ukraine said that the difference between expectations from previous military experience and the reality that U.S. Marine Corps sniper and International Legion volunteer Matthew Sampson faced in the war in Ukraine is quite significant. The first is the differences between the two armies, which were in terms of resources compared to what the U.S. military is used to. The U.S. military has a lot of resources and experience with logistics but it also has to do with the fact that we have the money to have these resources. I quickly realized that Ukraine is doing everything it can in very difficult conditions. It's just that the situation is bad and Ukraine does not have the capacity to provide enough of everything that is needed. You need weapons, ammunition. And this is what President Zelensky constantly talks about. He clearly emphasizes, just send weapons and ammunition. We will fight ourselves. Give us the tools so that we can fight this fight. Samson said. The second is the big difference in the fighting and tactics of war in Ukraine compared to Iraq and Afghanistan. The fighting in Bakhmut, Donetsk Oblast, in which the American volunteer took part, reminded him of the battle for Stalingrad during World War II. There were simply no such battles in Iraq and Afghanistan. Even if you look at the examples of the Marines who participated in clearing places like Fallujah city of Iraq, they cleared every room and building in that huge place. But the enemy did not have tanks, artillery or aircraft. The enemy had improvised explosive devices, Kalashnikov assault rifles, but there was no regular army. 
The battles in Bakhmut were completely different. We were attacked by tanks, helicopters, artillery, he said. Most of the fighting in Ukraine is with trenches, drones and artillery. In Iraq and Afghanistan, there were no trenches at all because they are simply not needed there. American forces and NATO controlled everything that was happening in the air. Most of our major operations were conducted at night because the enemy did not have significant thermal imaging capabilities. We all had night vision devices. When I came here, I saw that almost no one had such night vision devices. At that time, the enemy sometimes had thermal imaging devices which made night operations too dangerous. This is completely different from the Western doctrine, according to which they try to do more at night. The American volunteer veteran explained, some of the tactics the US military used in Iraq and Afghanistan simply don't work in Ukraine, even though they are supposed to work for this war. This is a completely different battlefield, he stressed.